Recently obtained video shows a different story than the department's version of events. Uh, that's how we're trying. Plus, we find out the officer punching the suspect had been disciplined twice before. Good evening to you at 6 o'clock. Our Kara Kenny also uncovered. It appears no action was taken against the officers involved in this incident. Kara joins us now with why a use of force expert says he is so concerned by the officer's actions. Muncie police has faced scrutiny in recent years amid allegations of excessive force. We've been requesting body camera footage since 2019 of several incidents in which excessive force is alleged. We haven't gotten all of that footage, but we did get some from a 2018 incident that made headlines. That cop's punching me, man. April 8th, 2018, a witness is rolling as Muncie police arrest Joshua Douglas. When WRTV first reported on Douglas' arrest, Muncie police only gave us this short clip of body camera footage. Hey, get back over here. More than two years after the incident, wow. WRTV investigates obtained multiple angles of body camera footage from the incident. It starts as Muncie police are responding to a report of an intoxicated person. Joshua Douglas initially ran away when they approached. Why'd you run? Because y'all pull up on me for no reason and doing all this. I ain't did nothing. Where's you? All we would have done was just sit there and talk just like what you and I are now. What's wrong with that? Because all this, all the extra shit is just, you no, know, I don't be out of time for it, man. I'm on parole, I work, I stay out of trouble. I've so, been since August. you being on parole, you take off running, you're just gonna catch another case. I'm just saying. Right? Douglas continues to talk to officers while keeping his phone to his ear. Officer Alex Moore's body camera is rolling as he approaches the scene. Put your phone down. Put your phone down. Real quick. Go and put your hands around your back, okay? Put your hands Don't down. pull away from me. Don't. Stay strong. Put your hands down. Get in your f***ing stunt. You hear me? Get on your f***ing stunt. You hear me? You f***ing hear me? Get on your f***ing stunt. Officer Moore, the officer seen punching Douglas, says in his official report he approached after finding a bag of amphetamines and said Douglas tensed and continued to resist. I gave multiple loud verbal commands for Joshua to get onto his stomach, but he refused to do so. You punched me in my eyes, in your head, in your teeth. In 2018, after Douglas' arrest, former Chief Joe Winkle told WRTV that the punching was not excessive. I don't think so. I mean, I think those punches, as long as you're telling him what you want him to do and where they were thrown, uh, that's how we're trained. Joshua Douglas suffered injuries and physical pain as a result of the arrest, according to an excessive force lawsuit filed against Muncie Police in 2019. To help us understand more on the arrest, we shared the footage with Seth Stoden, a University of South Carolina law professor and former police officer who wrote a book on police uses of force. When they bring him to the ground, the first thing that sticks out to me is, at best, this individual is... Um, tensing his body, but he's not trying to get up. He's not trying to strike the officers. The uh, what appear to be a series of closed fisted punches to the face are patently inappropriate. It's obviously excessive there. Stoden says punches to the head, especially if the person is laying on the ground, significantly increase the chance of serious injury. So you're actually sort of impacting them in two places at once. The point of contact between the fist and the head and the point of contact between the head and the ground. It's a bad way to get them to comply because it is very instinctual that when you are getting punched in the face, you hide your face. Stoughton says the officer escalated the situation. The officer seemed unnecessarily aggressive to me, jumping immediately to put your hands behind your back. Stoughton says this exchange also stuck out. You punch me in my eyes, in your head, in your teeth. And I'm a little alarmed at the way the officer seemed to relish 
after the fact having used force. That seems a little concerning. But the police department was not concerned enough to suspend, demote, or fire any of the officers involved, even after an internal review of the incident. We do know no outside agencies examined this incident either. Indiana State Police told us they never reviewed this footage and the FBI wouldn't confirm or deny any participation. We do know no officers were criminally charged in the Douglas incident. WRTV investigates uncovered Officer Alex Moore. The officer seen doing the punching had been disciplined twice before. His Muncie police personnel file shows he received a written reprimand in August 2016 for engaging in a physical altercation while off duty. A year later, he was suspended for 80 hours without pay for his role in a domestic dispute that took place while Moore was off duty. Yet Officer Moore kept his job until February 14th of this year. He resigned from the department nearly three years after the Douglas incident and after WRTV obtained the footage. As for Joshua Douglas and this 2018 incident, prosecutors dismissed a resisting law enforcement charge and he pleaded guilty to meth possession. Douglas is currently in federal custody on new drug charges. Officer Moore declined to comment to WRTV. And Kara, this is just one case. That's right, Amanda. We've requested body camera footage that's connected with excessive force lawsuits and federal indictments. All of this scrutiny has come at a significant cost to the city. The Muncie Police Department is under federal investigation. The case in September 2019, WRTV reported the federal government was investigating Muncie Police for alleged police brutality. Federal investigation has been underway since mid-2018. Muncie Police Chief Joe Winkle stepped down shortly after at the end of 2019. On March 11th, 2020, a federal grand jury indicted Winkle's son, Officer Chase Winkle, and two other Muncie police officers officers Jeremy Gibson and Sergeant Joseph Krasia following an excessive force investigation on arrests not related to the Joshua Douglas case. Sergeant Joe Krasia is accused of writing false reports. Sergeant Krasia is no longer with the department. Chase Winkle and Jeremy Gibson still work for Muncie Police. They're on leave without pay. The new chief, Nathan Sloan, declined our repeated requests for an on-camera interview regarding the Douglas case or his department's protocols. The Muncie assistant city attorney told us this administrative team is making a significant effort and is allocating considerable resources toward policy revision, training, and equipping our policing professionals. And they're focusing on accountability for the actions of our officers. Some say the damage has been done. Nine civil lawsuits suits have been filed against the city since 2017, alleging excessive force. WRTV has learned the city has reached settlements in three of those lawsuits, totaling half a million dollars. It's not yet clear how much will be paid out by insurance and how much taxpayers will have to foot the bill. The case is settled. Joshua Douglas, Jesse Vernon, and Danny Terry. Terry received a settlement after his lawsuit alleged he was permanently injured. A monthly police officer came up to Mr. Terry when he was laying face down on the floor and um, stomped his head into the corner of the uh, cabinets and the um, floor at least once, kicked Mr. Terry repeatedly, repeatedly kicked him while he's in handcuffs on the ground. Audio provided by Terry's attorney captures Terry interacting with police. <laughs> Thanks, them. Shut the f up. My nose is broke, sir. Like I'm leaking over here. I'm gonna take care of. Yeah, that's what I thought. Don't actually say that. Lay on your stomach. Ow, ow. Terry's attorney says he developed an infection and will likely spend the rest of his life in prison or a hospital. We are gonna be judged as a society by how we treat the least among us. And we treat the least among us horribly. WRTV Investigates was first to show you the body camera footage from the Jesse Vernon case back in 2018. Just seconds into the altercation, both officers' body cameras fall to the ground. Oh my God! Please! I'm not doing nothing! Stop! Fight. Right now! 
The body cameras are still on the ground as you hear officers deploy a stun gun on the handcuffed Vernon. Attorney Rob King represents Vernon. He acknowledges most of the suspects have criminal backgrounds when they had physical interactions with Muncie police. No person should be subject to um, illegal excessive force regardless of that person's status or stature or standing within the criminal justice system. Prosecutors dismiss charges against Vernon. The Vernon and Terry cases are not part of the federal indictments against police officers, which identifies people arrested by initials only. All three Muncie officers federally indicted have pleaded not guilty and are scheduled for trial in September of this year. And we are still waiting on body camera footage from five additional cases, and we will keep fighting until we get it. And Kara, the officers, officers federally charged could do time in prison, correct? Absolutely. Officer Gibson is facing 10 years. Sergeant Krasia is looking at up to 40 years. And Officer Winkle could be sentenced up to 140 years in prison. All right, Kara Kenny, thank you for all your time with that and for that report. And to see the raw Muncie Police body camera video in its entirety, click on this story on our website, WRTV.com and the WRTV app.